Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. Somebody's trying to create that with the eraser tool and they're having a little bit of question about it. And he's perfectly right to get it exactly in the center with the eraser tool is rather difficult. So I'm gonna show him three different ways you could do it. One of them would be probably my way that I would do it. I'm gonna get the Smart Fill tool and I would just fill in these three spots. That square is in the center of the hole. Now, if we actually take these and let's move them up. And if you control D and duplicated them, you know, this isn't gonna work like that. It's gonna put them right like that. But you could, if he wants them two inches apart, you can set your nudge factor on two inches and select those. And then that's the effect. That would, to me, be the easiest. He wants a two inch gap. The other way is not as easy, um, but I thought I'd show it out there, is to take your virtual segment delete key. And I am gonna show you the uh, other way to do it with the uh, eraser tool would be to do this. And then I'm just adding this because this would be an, an option, maybe in another case. And you can see we have this, but these aren't completed. So if we select them all and grab the, sh the shape tool, swipe, those are open nodes, so swipe through there and get them all selected. Then go to Windows, Dockers, and join curves and hit apply. Now they're sealed up. The only disadvantage is you can't just fill them because they're not really an object. So you'd still have to smart fill them. Um, I don't know how, what you could do. Yeah, it would be um, a little time consuming. So this way would be the best. The eraser tool would be great. So we're gonna set our eraser tool on one inch. This is a little thing I've learned years ago. That's not a one inch circle. That's a two inch circle. It's one inch from the center. Well, where's the center? And if you click on that and drive through, it seals up and you're done. And, and then you all have to do is take it and turn it red and it worked. The only, there's no way to, to do this. This has to be a group for it to do all of them. If it was just one, you could put some nodes there my suggestion, and you, ironically, you can't just put an indexing line because then the, the racer tool is going to try to attach itself to the indexing line. So if you change your nudge factor to one inch and move this up and then can, uh, hit the plus key and move it down twice, that gives you a reference point. And see, so you're two inches apart. And if we go to the racer tool, you can see that it's exactly two inches. Now, this isn't going to be as perfect or symmetrical, but click on the item, hit the, well, don't hit the space bar. Let's do it again. I've gotten used to hitting the, like the P key. Well, must not have. Well, let me start over. Select the item. No. and then hold down the control button. There you go. And go all the way across and see you're still in the center and boom, it did it. And it's about as close as you would want to be. If you look, we're right on the, we're right on the indexing lines pretty much. So that would be a way to do it. Um, going back, I mean, let me go back to the one, the one line. You cannot, well, I shouldn't say you can't, but uh, when you do that, whoop, get the eraser tool again. When you click on that and then hold down the button, see it's trying to connect onto the indexing line. So just make a, you could either do that or make a, a two inch rectangle. Um, if we are working in the center of the page, let's make it longer. Holding down the shift key, it'll make it grow. Hit P, put it in the center of the page. You could use the rectangle as your reference and see, and then hold down your control button and swipe over. I didn't get it. 
Well, it's because I have an indexing line there. Let's take the indexing lines away. So it did work on those two. Let's go back, grab it, hold down your control button. Well, that didn't work. See, now we actually have a, a mark there. I used to think you could hit any letter on the key. There you go. You can hit any letter on your keyboard. And then that way you could kind of adjust it up and down. Well, so I must have gone back too far and I, I ungrouped these. Yeah, I did. So let's take the four circle or the three circles and go up to object and group them. To Well, it is grouped. Wonder why that's not working. So take your eraser tool. And see, you only have, you can hold down the control button and it'll help you stay on there. There we go. So you could use a rectangle indexing lines. Um, you can see I'm off. Uh, you know, maybe on the other end, I'm closer. So indexing lines, but really and truly, if, and that would work in 99% of the cases, but if you have to be perfect, if it has to be equal, and we can prove that these are not equal, um, let's go over here and go up to object and uh, ungroup them. Now let's go up to object, break the curve apart. If we take these and control D and make it red, well, I only got one, but anyway, it's, this is probably good enough for 99% of the time. Uh, the eraser tool is pretty cool because you could do things like that. Um, you don't have to use a rectangle. Uh, let's make sure these are grouped together again. Uh, I do love the eraser tool. I don't use it very much. and But you can make it, you know, and it, it's ironic that <laughs> one inch nib, but it's really a two inch cutting surface. You know, you can go at any angle and swipe through there and, and make a lot of closed, um, you know, you don't have to go all the way across, make a lot of closed uh, little section segments of that. And what's cool about it, they're, they're objects, so you can do that and take the, uh, uh, the line away, the outline away. Anyway, I hope that made him understand a little bit and helped him a little bit. Thank you for watching.